Intermediate Accounting 26, Convertible Bonds, Bonds with Warrants, and Bond Amortization. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. We are now on Facebook. St. Louis Test Prep is our Facebook page where we have most of our videos linked. I want to jump over to a set of questions that I did for a student that I'd like to talk about here and include three topics in particular that I had on the PowerPoint slide. And the first deals with a bond conversion, and we're going to refer to the intermediate accounting video I did a while ago, where I compared, where I described, excuse me, convertible bonds, the idea that you can take a debt instrument like a bond and convert it into stock. The question that's addressed in this problem is, how much value do I assign to those two instruments? And to throw into the uh, equation, we're going to have the bonds at one market price and the common stock that we're converting to at another market price to complicate things. So we're looking at question seven here. Ryder has $5 million of 8% convertible bonds outstanding, which means they pay 8% a year to bondholders. But it has a, convert a convertible feature. Each $1,000 bond converts into 30 shares of $30 par value common stock. Now note that this says par value, not market value, par value. The bond pays interest twice a year, which is common for a corporate bond. Remember that you can exercise your right to convert the bond into stock or choose not to. So on July 31st of 08, the holders of some of the bonds 1.5 million of the 5 million total decide to exercise. That's another trick that's in the question. Not all of the $5 million in bonds get converted, only some of them. They exercise their conversion privilege. What does that mean? That means that they send the bonds back to the issuer, and in exchange they get a certain number of shares of stock at a certain par value. As I mentioned at the beginning, both the bonds and the common stock have certain market values. The market price of the bonds was 105, 105% of par or $1,050 per $1,000 bond. There's three ways to say it. The market price of the common stock per share was $36. We should put per share in there just to excuse me, be clear. The bond was bought at a premium, excuse me, the total unamortized bond premium when we did the conversion was $350,000. We've also talked about in prior videos bond premiums and discounts and how those get amortized, and so we have that issue with these bonds. So now that we've read this paragraph with all this information in it, we get down to the question we're being asked. Ryder, the issuer, should record as a result of the conversion what? What should they record? I'm going to jump over to Excel here. And I note here that we talked about convertible bonds in intermediate accounting 13. We described them generally, and we didn't go into this level of detail. But you can go there if you want a basic explanation of convertible bonds. So each $1,000 bond was convertible into 30, sh into 30 shares of common stock at $30 par value. Then we list the market prices here. For the bond, the price per bond was $1,050, and for each share of stock, it was $36. We say we have an unamortized bond premium. Now remember that only... 1.5 million of the total is being converted. So if the premium is 350,000, if I look at just the portion of the premium that applies to the bonds I'm converting, I take the 350, which is J10 in blue, multiplied by the fraction of the bonds that are being converted, 1.5 over 5, which is just like 1.5 million over 5 million. So the unamortized bond premium that I need to deal with is 105000 
So the question that we're being asked is, what's the journal entry? Because part of the journal entry is going to answer the question that's on the Word document. One of these answers is going to fall out when we do the journal entry. So if, we're, if the bonds get redeemed, sent back to the issuer, that's a payable that we remove by debiting $1.5 million. We're issuing common stock, $30 par, times 30 shares, times 1,500 bonds, which is another way of saying 1.5 million in bonds divided by $1,000 each per bond means 1.5 million divided by 1,000, or 1,500 bonds. So we have to take 30 shares times $30 and multiply it by 1,500 bonds. So the credit, because we're issuing more equity in the form of common stock, is 1,350,000. Now we need an entry to make the journal entry balance. We need a credit, excuse me, to make the journal entry balance. And to make it balance, it's 255,000. So a credit of 255,000 is the correct answer. Now how do we label that? What account do we use? If I jump back to this document, you can see that that credit of 255,000 is paid in capital in excess of par. We found we learned that when you issue stock, whatever amount you receive in excess of par value is additional paid in capital. The same is true here. So that's our answer to number seven. So I'm going to put that in blue so we know we've answered it. Let's go on to number eight. And I like to tell people when you're given complicated questions, particularly in intermediate accounting, don't read the entire paragraph first. Go down to the last sentence to find out what you're really being asked. The amount of proceeds from the issuance that should be accounted for as the initial carrying value of bonds payable would be. So you're looking for carrying value. That's really what you're being asked. So let now that we know we're looking for carrying value, let's read the question. On this date, Gentry, Gentry Company issued a bond at a premium. They issued it at 103, 103% of par, which is also 1,030 per bond, per $1,000 bond. 600 bonds, 9%, each bond being 1,000. But now we bring up a new subject, which is a warrant. And we had a video that I'll get to in a minute that defined warrants, and a warrant serves as a sweetener to make the bond more attractive to a buyer. It says each bond attached to each bond was a stock warrant, entitling the holder to purchase 10 shares of Dent Gentry's common stock. It's a sweetener. It's an added benefit if you're willing to go out and buy Gentry's bond. Both the stock warrant and the bond both the stock warrant and the stock, excuse me, had market values. The bond and the, and the warrant. The bonds without the warrant were priced at 95, 95% of par or $950. That's the value of the bond without the warrant. The market price of the warrant itself was $50 per warrant. So 950 bond without the warrant, $50 the warrant by itself. That's the question we're being asked. Now let's jump over to Excel and go to problem A. You'll see that Intermediate Accounting 15 was the video where we explained warrants originally in less detail than we do here. So $600,000 priced through the premium, we multiply those two numbers together and we get proceeds received 618000 So each there's one warrant per bond that allows you to get 10 shares of stock, 600 bonds outstanding. We multiply 10 shares times 600 bonds. We get 6,000 shares will be issued if every bondholder decided to exercise and buy the stock with the warrant. We're going to use the market value method where we take the dollar amount of the bond and the warrant. Those market values we were given, we add them up. 
and the amount of the proceeds of the total 618 that we assigned to the bond is 95% of the total because the bond was 95% of the market value. 5% of the 618 gets assigned to the warrant because 50 over 100 is 5%. And if I add those two amounts together, that's my check figure that shows that I've assigned the entire 618,000. The time that remains here, I want to jump back over to problem 14 quickly, which is a bond premium problem. So we issue a bond at a premium, we have accrued interest, and we're talking about carrying value. So to go to this quickly, problem 14, you can see our bond accounting on videos 3 to 6. This has to do with calculating numbers of days. So you can see that we have an unamortized discount of $12,000. And here's our carrying value, $1,188,000, which is the original $1.2 million face amount at a premium, less the unamortized discount. That's at October 1st, 2009. Now we need to do some amortizing. The years until maturity are 8.5. If I multiply years by 12, I get 102 months. The period from October 1st to 1231 is three months. So the percentage I need to amortize is three divided by 102, blue divided by green, which is 2.9%. So if I take my unamortized 12,000 and multiply it by 2.9%, that's the amortization for that three month period between October 1st and December 31st. So I add that amount, the 352.94, to my carrying value, it increases. It's subtracted from my unamortized discount, so that decreases. So the carrying value of the bond, which is the question we're being asked, is 1,188,360. And what you'll notice is, is when a bond is purchased at a premium, as we amortize the discount, the carrying value of the bond is going to decline so that at the end of eight and a half years, the face value, the carrying value is going to be all the way down to a million dollars once we get way down here. That's the end of our uh, video here. Let's go back to PowerPoint. For continuous classroom weekly live chats on critical accounting topics, it's on our website. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, where you get a complete list of our videos. You can buy video content for live tutoring and chat sessions one-on-one -on -one. over the web using gotomeeting.com. Here's our website, my email address, and the phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.